About two weeks ago, we covered a tower called the Monkey Ace Tower. And honestly, I was super intrigued by not only the Sky Shredder, but also the Flying Fortress. Now, the Flying Fortress is the tier five option for the bottom route, and it is so overpowered, it's insane. I mean, the description of it is, this is a big plane. <laughs> I, I mean, okay, sure. You know, a fair descriptor. But the one before it probably sheds a little more light on what it can actually do. The Spectre says, rapidly fires darts and bombs, dominating most balloon types easily. On top of that, fortunately enough, by going two to the middle route, it can also hit camo balloons. So theoretically speaking, the Flying Fortress can hit all balloon types and should be able to fight his way to the top. The only problem I foresee is that we have to forego the top route that means that we can't get rapid fire or lots more darts. But who cares? You got exploding pineapples on your side. And for this one, I feel like we should play a new map. So I'm gonna play downstream and we're gonna see what exactly happens with it. So one single tower, that's it. I think we'll be able to beat round 80, but not much further than that. However, I have been wrong before and uh, this very well could be one of those times as well so let's see let's pick the perfect i mean right here seems good but maybe maybe more so right there actually let's let's start him off right here and let's just see what he can accomplish so sharper darts yes and of course we have our good old-fashioned cash drops here to help us out because we need a lot of cash over a hundred thousand dollars in order to get this thing maxed out so That'll be a good little start for us there. We can start getting some of the other upgrades going as well. Uh, exploding pineapple, check. And then let's get banana farm one, banana farm two, and the other one right here. These ones will be the marketplace, and this one will be the bank. And then this one will be our good old banana plantation. All right, now that alone should be able to cover us for now. We'll see how long, but I, I don't foresee there being any serious, serious issues with this. However, I do see a serious issue with... Oh, let's cut that. However, I do see a serious issue with the way my webcam was placed. Let's put that right down here so it's blocking less of the action. Uh, all right, so what I upgraded, by the way, really quickly was exploding pineapples. We also got these sharper darts upgrades, so darts can pop eight balloons each, and centered path, which is a new central flight path for maximum mat coverage, which is really good. Next, we'll have Never Miss targeting that darts automatically seek out and pop balloons by themselves. In fact, we should probably get that one literally right now. The sooner, the better for something like that. So there we go. Centered path. It's covering a ton of the screen. And with the automatic heat-seeking darts, it uh, definitely makes life a lot easier for us. Uh, I, think, I think that's actually an understatement, really, how much it, it really does help us. It's, it's quite insane, really. All right, well, let's keep on saving up the cash here. And as soon as we can borrow the money from the bank here for the $12,000, we are probably going to do that, and that way we can get ourselves this banana research facility upgrade because, uh, well, that one's really good and a necessity. So boom, boom. Thank you very much. Then we'll go for the central market upgrade, and then the money will keep on flowing from there. Now, the next upgrade, Spectre, which is the really important one, is mega, mega expensive at 20000 uh, Nothing compared to the Tier 5 form, but as far as Tier 4s go, that might be one of the most expensive Tier 4 upgrades in Blue and Star Defense 6. So, if you're trying to play along with us while we do this, bear that in mind. This is not a very cheap tower to get. But that is usually a very amazing sign when that's the case, because that means that... Uh, well, we should be able to theoretically uh, <laughs> uh, hold our own with just a single tower. At least that's the hope anyway. I mean, you never really know for sure, do you? So let's uh, let, let's just kind of hope for the best here. All right, keep on taking them out there, my friend. Keep taking them out. We are looking fine here. Um, I also need another 5000 for the central market. The only problem is that unfortunately 40% of our money goes back to paying back that loan that we took at the top, so... Might be a little bit of time before we actually get it. Although, I don't know if I... Actually, if I pull that money out, we'll have exactly enough. There we go. Perfect. Sometimes I'm reluctant to pull the money out when it has that, I, I guess, debt on us. Because then it's like, eh, how much are we actually going to be getting for this? But that's good. Now we'll do the saving game and try to get 51000 for Monkey Wall Street. Because Monkey Wall Street is a tier 5 uh, bottom tier... Uh, upgrade for the banana farm and it'll give you four thousand dollars every single round i think it's four thousand five hundred to be exact forty five hundred dollars after every single round that ain't bad that ain't bad one bit so hopefully we can keep on holding out and doing things strong i imagine with the way things are this specter tower is going to be just fine on his own i really have almost no concerns at all about him but, uh, you know, just in case, you always want to be careful about this kind of stuff. So there we go. 
$20,000. And actually, we could focus on even just selling these off and just letting it kind of play out. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if he'd be able to do this on his own, to be completely honest with you. I'm going to get Spy Plane Inspector, and I feel like if we don't get the upgrades for, like, Monkey Wall Street and things, we'll probably end up getting this faster anyways. So, let's do that then. Let's just save the money we get from this and just put it all into getting the Flying Fortress ability. I mean, that thing is crazy. I love how it's just described as this is a big plane, too. That's always funny. But look at the Spectre go, tearing them all to shreds. I mean, they can't even spawn on screen yet, which is just kind of embarrassing. Also, if you notice, he pretty much could shoot from anywhere on the screen. It doesn't matter where. He's kind of got the, uh, the whole sniper thing going on. Except the sniper even gets blocked by certain areas. So technically speaking, this Spectre has a better range than does the sniper, when you think about it anyway. Which is pretty cool. I mean, that's, that's something, all right. So, 12,000, 15,000, 27, 33,000, uh, wow, we actually almost do have enough to get that Flying Fortress, which is pretty awesome when you think about it. All right, well, whenever we're ready, we'll sell these things off here. So, that's, yeah, that'll be enough then. 27,000 we'll need. Or, sorry, 27,000 is how much we'll get for that. So, it'll still be a lot, but we'll be there shortly, actually. Probably in about $10,000 or so, we'll have enough for it. And, of course, we can borrow some money, too, so... Technically speaking, we might actually already be at the golden point. Let me see real quick. Sell that. Sell that. And... Well, actually, we don't even need to borrow the money there. We can just put ourselves directly on the point in pretty much one round exactly. Oh, man, oh, man! We're literally about to get it here! This is it, everyone. The moment we've all been waiting for. Boom, the Flying Fortress. Well, there you have it. So now, literally, it's just going to be this Flying Fortress for as many rounds as possible. Now, I don't foresee any trouble getting past round 40, which is the end of easy mode. Don't see any trouble at all for round 60. I mean, genuinely speaking, I might be crazy. I don't see any problem at all getting around 80, but we'll see. I mean, this really is a standalone tower in its truest form. Standalone, literally meaning that because it can hit all types of balloons, it uh, can just fend, fend for itself. The singular tower here. I mean, look at him go. He is just taking them down to pieces. I wonder, I wonder if... Heads up play. So let's say like one tower versus one tower versus one tower versus one tower. Besides the the true sun god, what would be the best tower? So not including the true sun god. If I had to guess, I would probably say the dark champion, the dark knight, legend of the night. I think that would probably be the best. Oh, but I could also be wrong. I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section down below. I'm kind of curious to see if you guys share that opinion or what. I mean, there's a lot of great towers out there. Don't get me wrong. I just think that that tower in particular might be the most powerful one of them all. But there we go. Round 40. Super easy. I mean, technically speaking, I think a Moab was on that round. I didn't really see him, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that was a little bit of a joke. All right, here it is, everyone. Round 50, which supposedly has two Moab balloons that come through on it. Uh, I, I saw a, a, a peak of one <laughs> just for like a split second, but otherwise looking very easy. It's strange, too, how the Flying Fortress doesn't really keep a hole. I guess it shoots too fast for its automatic heat-seeking ability to really work most of the time because it does miss the stray balloon or two that come through. Now, when there's a big group of them, it's easy because it hits one, explodes, and does AoE damage. But when it's just one singular one, like that little red balloon, just literally one red balloon, sneak it on by. It's actually hard for him to keep track of, which is super interesting that out of all the different towers out there, most of them would perform better when things are spread out. But this tower in particular... Performs better with things bunched up, not spread out. It sounds small and minor, and it is small and minor, but it's definitely something interesting to note, that's for sure. All right, well, either way, round 55 coming at him, and boom, got him good there. Also, those exploding pineapples really don't... I mean, considering they just get dropped willy-nilly wherever, I wish you could choose where it was dropped, because being it gets dropped wherever, most of the time, I'm not even convinced it really does any damage at all. Like, it's just... Yeah, like, I don't know. Kind of wish it was more so on the tracks, but... Either way, round 60 should be an interesting round. It's the first round of a BFB. I don't suspect there'll be any holdup, just based off of its performance so far. But there's only one way to find out, really, and that would be to play it out. 
to give it a run, uh, a little run through. All right, well, one more wave to go, and then that experiment will be on its way. So we'll be looking good, good, good. All right, here it is, wave 60 with the BFB. It just exploded. I mean, it was literally just as bad as a Moab balloon round. That didn't even... It just literally exploded. It wasn't even better than a regular old Moab. That's insane. All right, well, on the road to wave 80. All right, so we're on wave 75. Five waves left in this mess until we get to the big old round 80, which, as always, if you watch my videos any other time, you would know what I always say, that 78 and 79 are the most difficult rounds, and that 80 isn't that bad at all. The ZOMGs are very intimidating in appearance, but in performance, I don't know. I, I'm more terrified if you put, like, 50 ceramics in a lineup in a row than I am of a ZOMG balloon. You know, I, I just... I don't know. They're slow moving. They're not that powerful. The DDTs are also sort of menacing, but it depends if you have any quick tracking towers. So if you have a tower that can pursue them throughout the whole map, like for instance the Monkey Ace, eh, it makes them less scary. But if you have stationary towers that aren't good at tracking fast moving targets, well then, yeah, you're in a lot of trouble. You're in a lot, a lot of trouble if that's the case. So, either way though, ZOMGs, because that's what we're talking about here for round 80, just not that intimidating, not that scary. All right, keep it up here, Palaruni. And he's holding strong. He is absolutely holding strong here. And there we go. Round 79 now. We didn't even really see any balloons on round 78. 79, we barely saw the... Yeah, we were seeing the beginning, like the tips of Moab balloons, and that's it until they get popped. All in all, I think things are looking good for us. I think things are looking really good. All right, there we go, there we go. Keep on cutting them down, and boom, there it is, wave 80, round 80, right here everyone, right now, and there we go, the ZOMG pops, and that, my friends, is the Flying Fortress, a tower that I very well believe could make it past round 100 if left alone.